Hello, everyone. I'm Adam Robinson, CEO of Hireology. Welcome to the second installment of our quick hit webinar series designed to provide hiring advice in short, digestible, 15-minute segments. In this series, we're going to be focusing on the future of hiring and how to win in the current challenging hiring climate. For the first webinar in this series, we're going to be starting with an overview of exactly why we would define the current hiring landscape as a crisis, and then we'll dig into some actionable steps you can take to weather the storm. Hiring is really hard right now. You've seen the headlines and you felt it yourself. If you have even one open role in your organization, no matter what it is, I guarantee you are having a harder time filling that role than you might have had in years past. We got through a once in a lifetime pandemic and now we have to get through a really, really tough road to complete recovery. So let's look at some of the numbers that represent the foundation of this crisis. First, in June of 2021, we saw a job gain of about 850,000 new jobs, which comes at the heels of 560,000 new jobs created in May. As COVID restrictions continue to ease and folks get vaccinated, schools and businesses across all industries are reopening, causing hiring to spike. Now, accelerated job growth is certainly a good sign for the economic recovery, it, it is a sign that businesses are opening, people are spending, and the economy is getting back on track. However, this issue comes with these next two numbers. The most recent BLS numbers put the unemployment rate at 5.9%. This is actually slightly higher than we saw in May. And the percentage of working age Americans actually participating in the workforce is lingering right around 61, 62%, which is down from the pre-pandemic percentage of over 63%. What these two numbers tell us is that we are pouring new jobs into the economy, but people aren't taking them. And each month, these second two numbers remain the same, yet we add more jobs. So the harder it becomes for you to fill those open roles, right? As demand goes up and supply stays the same, it just gets more difficult, right? So what we're facing is the worst hiring crisis we've seen in more than 20 years. Many of you are really struggling and we see you and we understand. Now, solving this of course starts with an understanding of what's causing it. Why are you struggling to fill your open roles despite the unemployment rate lingering at twice the pre-pandemic number? Well, experts have thrown around many guesses and here are some of the biggest things we've seen. First, a lack of childcare. Uh, school is out right now for the summer, but before that, many kids had not been in the classroom since March of 2020. This is a really big strain on parents who might find it more fiscally beneficial to stay at home rather than take a low paying job and pay for childcare. I do think that we're gonna feel some relief as soon as school starts again in the fall, however. But of course, that's not the only issue, right? Uh, health concerns are another one, especially in patient or customer facing roles. There is still a pandemic and with new variants going around combined with some vaccine hesitancy, it's giving some people who might otherwise take these types of roles some pause. Another is early retirement. Baby boomers who are close to retirement age at the start of the pandemic chose to retire by and large rather than re-enter the workforce, which caused a big decline in the number of people available to work. Similarly, for the last several decades, we've seen lower birth rates. There's simply not as many people available to work as there have been in the past based on raw demographics. And then finally, this is the one that you have the most control over. There's a misalignment between what employers are offering and what job seekers need. In terms of things like pay, benefits, working conditions, flexibility, that's a big one, culture, and more and more, people have had a lot of time to reassess what they want in jobs and what they aren't gonna work for. Uh, and, and so if you don't meet those criteria, you're just really at a disadvantage. In fact, a recent study conducted by uh, our friends at ZipRecruiter found that 70% of job seekers who last worked in the leisure and hospitality industry say they are now looking for work in a different industry. So uh, you're probably thinking, what exactly can I do about all this? Well, it may seem like most of this is out of your control, but it's not. There are things you can do to position yourself to win over job seekers before your competitors do. And of course, many organizations are opting to increase wages, and that's great and works for many companies, but if that's not something you're able to do 
in perpetuity with no ceiling, which is what it feels like right now, there are other really impactful changes you can make. And before I even dig into these, I wanna say that whatever it is you do, you need to move with urgency. You can't sit around waiting for this crisis to clear itself up because it's just not going to. You have to make these changes right now. So let's dig into them. The number one thing you can do right now to win in this hiring crisis is to figure out how to move faster in your hiring process. I will say it again. The number one thing you can do is just move faster. Here's why. We recently conducted a study of people who have searched and applied for jobs in the past year. When we asked how long it took for them to complete the entire hiring process, from researching companies to accepting an offer, 43% of respondents across all industries said it took less than two weeks. This is lightning fast by historical standards. What this tells us is that the most eager and active job seekers are out there getting hired faster than ever before. And if you aren't set up to act quickly, when you have quality candidates in the pipeline, you will lose them to competitors. So how can you speed things up? Well, there's a few relatively easy things you can do to shave off days or even weeks. First, mandate faster applicant and candidate response times for managers. Don't let your recruiters and hiring managers sit on applications for a few days. It, by then, the most qualified folks have already moved on to the interview stage with your competitors who move faster. Next, use smart tools to automate screening to weed out the people who aren't a fit, allowing you to get two top candidates sooner. Typically, these tools work by asking candidates to complete a brief series of questions about their experience, availability, and motivations, and automatically eliminates applicants who don't answer a certain threshold of them correctly. Also, look for bottlenecks in your hiring process. Maybe you have too many people who want to interview the candidate, and it's dragging the process out. In this case, you might opt for group interviews so that everyone can speak to the candidate in a shorter time frame. Next, embrace mobile. Your hiring managers and recruiters are busy. When they have to wait until they have time to either sit at their desk to respond to candidates or review applicants, it's slowing you down and you're missing out on top talent who move on to competitors while they wait for you. And we see this play out with our customers. Those that use our mobile app alongside desktop found that they're able to connect with job seekers twice as fast as those relying on desktop alone. Think about that. The use of mobile technology uh, to review and respond to applicants can help you move 2x the speed you are today. Lastly, don't rely on email as your only form of communication with candidates. Just like your recruiters, candidates are busy too. It takes them a while to weed through cluttered email inboxes. Why not reach them directly via the device they're using at all times, their smartphone? Need proof that this works? Hireology customers have found that they're able to hire people up to eight days faster when they're texting candidates rather than relying solely on email. Now, I know that you're short staffed and busy and working extra hard to recruit and hire talent, and you don't always have time to enact big changes, but these are some of the relatively straightforward and easy things you can do now to speed up your process and shave off critical time, and it can make all the difference. Another easy thing you can do is to turn the top performers you do have on board into recruiters. Chances are your top performers have a network of peers and former colleagues who are just like them. Why not tap into that network to find your next hire? Why am I focusing on referrals? Well, because employees referred by your existing teammates typically end up becoming some of your most successful employees who stay the longest. That's because good people know good people and they're most likely to refer the best of the best in their networks. People who they truly believe would be a good fit for your organization's culture and values. Plus, this is really cost effective uh, as a way to get yourself in front of a lot of people you might otherwise not have reached. We've seen this play out firsthand here at Hireology. Fully 33% of all hires we've made in the last year actually came through existing employee referrals. That's a staggering number. So what does it take to build a great employee referral program? First, you need to put real effort into it. You need to make sure people know that it exists and designate a time or place where you can share those roles often, whether there's a page on your company's intranet or in regular all company meetings. If you have a lot of open roles, try to highlight a different one each week or each month to help people narrow their focus. 
And of course, you should incentivize people to participate, whether that's with a cash bonus, those work the best, or with other rewards like gift cards. One note on the cash bonus route, many companies will offer half of it when the person's hired and the rest once the referral has been employed for a period of time, like six months. That way you motivate people to refer people who are going to stick around. And lastly, make it easy. People shouldn't have to fill out long forms or jump through a bunch of hoops administratively to refer someone. Allow your people to share referrals using the technology and systems and channels they're already using. That's text, that's social media, that's email. Next, you want to make it as easy as possible for job seekers to apply to your open roles and remain engaged throughout your process. This is really important because eager and motivated job seekers today are exploring many, many different companies. In fact, in the study I referred earlier, we asked applicants, how many jobs are they applying to in a recent job search? And we found that virtually half of the respondents apply to at least 11 to 16 jobs uh, is the average range with a third applying to more than 16 jobs. This was an eye-opening number because in years past when we've asked this question, 75% of respondents would land in the one to four range. This is a four times expansion of the number of jobs they're looking at. So what this is telling us is that there is an audience of applicants who are eager for work. They have a lot of options, right? So they're taking advantage of those options. So if they're already applying to 16 jobs, why, you know, why, would they apply to yours if you ask them to spend hours and hours just to put their name in for consideration, right? You got to make it easy and meet them where they are. So what can your company do to make the process easier for your applicants and your candidates? First and most importantly, make your application short for the bare minimum, right? The, ask for the bare minimum. Uh, and have your recruiters get more information from the candidates later, much like your sales team would do with new prospect leads. In some cases, we even recommend not asking for resumes. Nurses, for example, sometimes you don't have resumes at all, so don't force them to submit one, especially at a time when they have plenty of other options. Second, embrace candidate texting. Much like I mentioned earlier, reaching candidates on a device they're using all day that they have at their literal fingertips make it, makes it a whole lot easier for them to respond uh, to your outreach, to schedule interviews, to kick off reference checks, and more. Next, don't overcomplicate skills testing. Skills tests are incredibly important for many roles and they can give you peace of mind that you're hiring the right person. But at a time when the best applicants are applying to dozens of roles, asking them to spend hours on a skills test can deter them from wanting to continue the process. Look for ways to send simple but effective tests if you feel they're necessary. Lastly, be transparent. Just giving candidates insight into every step in the process can ease their anxiety about interviewing. It can make them feel less overwhelmed and in turn make the process feel more straightforward. As a bonus, it's also a reflection of your management team and can help you stand out as a quality company with a better hiring process. Next, you can't passively wait around for applicants to find you and wanna work for you. At a time when job seekers have the upper hand, you have to do a little bit of work to capture their attention. This is known as recruitment marketing. The aspect of good recruitment marketing is a solid career site. This is the foundation of your efforts. Your career site is a dedicated section of your website completely focused on applicant messaging. It's the hub of your employer brand. Make your benefits, culture, values, and other unique offerings crystal clear. Here's an example of the career site of one of our customers, Anytime Fitness. You can see that beyond a listing of open roles, they're marketing their organization to help applicants get their careers in gear. They tell the story of their brand, they highlight the benefits, the culture, and other perks like discounts and access to their wellness centers. Your career site can include anything that matters to your talent pool. Simply put, if an applicant has several offers from similar roles with similar pay, what would make them choose you? Now, while your career site is the foundation of your recruitment marketing efforts, it's only one aspect. Your entire approach needs to mirror a traditional marketing strategy. For example, when you're marketing your business's products or services, you take the time to really understand your target audience beyond just simple demographics. What are their pain points and needs? What would make them do business with you over a competitor? The same goes for open roles. 
So you already know the qualifications and experience you're looking for in an ideal candidate, but you also need to really understand the needs and priorities of the people you're hoping to hire in order to get them to come to work for you over your competitors. These are things like benefits, culture, remote work, flexibility, et cetera. It's also important to diversify your applicant sources. So think beyond job boards as your sole source of candidates and post your open roles where your target audience is spending time. At Hireology, we can help you manage your integrations with most channels. One channel we recently launched is an integration with Facebook for jobs. Our customers are finding that it's a really easy and free, importantly, way to passively reach a massive audience of potential job seekers on a channel um, you know, they're already spending a lot of time on. So we're finding that jobs on Facebook is actually driving just as many quality candidates as many of the paid job boards at no cost. Lastly, you also need to track and optimize your efforts. With a marketing campaign, you spend time understanding which of your channels brings in the most leads and you'd allocate more of your financial resources there. The same goes for recruitment marketing. Learn which channels drive the most qualified applicants and prioritize your spend accordingly. And finally, embrace best in class hiring tools. Even if you do all of the above right, if you have outdated tools in disparate systems, it's going to be really hard to bring it all together. Hireology is more equipped than any other tool out there to help you weather this hiring crisis. We're an all-in-one platform that facilitates the entire hiring process from attracting new candidates across multiple channels to bringing the best of those candidates on board to your business quickly. And we offer top-notch customer support from a team of experts who have been there before. In June alone, we helped our customers make more than 12,000 hires with an average hiring speed across the entire customer base of just under three weeks. So if any of the advice I walked through today resonated with you, or if you want to learn more about how Hireology can help you win in the current hiring crisis, please reach out to us at info at hireology.com. We'd love to hear from you and continue this discussion. Uh, on behalf of the team here at Hireology, this is Adam Robinson saying thank you so much for listening, and we'll talk to you soon.